Many of you have been asking questions about living and traveling on the road full time with your family. In this series, we are continuing to answer those questions. Hey everybody, I'm Garrett. And I'm Carolyn. And we're Diary of a Family. And we're living life intentionally with you. Last week, we shared with you our transition from sticks and bricks into our RV living. This week, we want to share with you the five essential RV accessories that you're going to need before you hit the road. Number one, let's talk about water. You need to have hoses, water filters and a pressure regulator for your RV. They have special hoses that are made for drinking water so you don't want to get a garden hose. Yep, no old garden hose will do. Now it'll be okay if you're using that for flushing your black water tank but we'll get into that in a little while. Wherever you go the water changes the uh, the taste and what chem chemicals are in it or what sediment is in it. So a filter is really important to protect your systems and to protect your health. We use a one micron water filter that we found to be very effective. It doesn't last as long as some of the other water filters but we would prefer to have cleaner water. Now when it comes to water pressure regulators, this is very important as some RV parks have high water pressure that might be too high for your pipes in your RV. Those PEX pipes aren't very strong. They have to be lightweight and if you're putting too much pressure for their rating, you're gonna pop something somewhere. You don't want to flood in your rig. All of these accessories that we're going to talk about and show you you can purchase through our Amazon affiliate just by using the link that's in the description below. Number two is a fun one, and that's your black water hoses and taking care of all the waste in your rig. All right, so this section is important because it's the sewer, and at some point, those tanks get full. You're gonna have to do something about it. So what is the gear that we need, Garrett? First off, you'll need hoses to go from your black water tanks to the dump. Now, most RV parks have sewer hookups right in the campsite you're in, but not all of them. Along with the hoses, you'll also need adapters. We found clear elbow is actually pretty key for us because it allows us to see when our tanks are actually clean. If, it's, if you can't see what color your black water is, then you don't know if your tanks are really clean. Most of the new RVs have a flush ability and you will need some sort of garden hose to attach, to push in fresh water, to rinse out the inside and get all the nasty crud unstuck from the wall. Now let's talk about leveling. Because who wants to live in an RV with a slanted floor? You are going to need leveling blocks and wheel chocks to make sure that your RV is level and doesn't roll away in the middle of the night. Now, contrary to popular belief, not all RV parks are flat as a pancake. Heck no! <laughs> we have had very interesting experiences all over the place with parking on the side of a hill to having the front end of our rig almost touching the ground. It has been pretty interesting, but leveling blocks have proved crucial in multiple occasions. You also want to make sure that you have wheel chocks for your wheels. Now there are a few different models. We use the big fat rubber ones that go under like semi-truck wheels, and that has proved very helpful for us. But there are many different options, and some are better than others depending on the type of rig you have. We have heard good things about the X chocks that sit between the tires, so uh, we have linked that as well. When we get a pair, we might do a review. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> the little plastic chocks that most everybody has, you can run those over and squish them flat 
so maybe not such a good idea for the bigger rigs. Number four is a dehumidifier. Now this is kind of more regionally specific. If you are gonna be doing a lot of traveling on let's say the East Coast or areas that have a lot of humidity, you need to keep the humidity inside your rig low. The reason for this is you can and will grow mold in your walls, in your RV, and then Basically, you'll have to total your RV. You will yeah. not be able to live in it. You will not be able to sell it again because of the health risk. If you're staying in a place like Arizona, you probably don't even need to consider a dehumidifier. Maybe one of those like dry Z airs containers might be all that you need to keep that extra moisture out. Now, if you're gonna be hardcore and do some winter camping, remember that when it's snowy outside, that's a lot of moisture and your humidity will go up even though it's the middle of the winter. Number five, surge protectors. We can't say enough about protecting your rig. We have heard multiple stories of people who have fried most of the electronics in their rig just because they didn't have a surge protector to stop power from surging. <laughs> yes, eloquent as Shakespeare. You don't know what electricity problems the RV park you're pulling into has. They might have big issues, they might not. Or lightning might strike a pole, or a tree limb hit a pole, or something like that happen. You wanna protect your equipment, get that surge protector, Get a good one, especially if you have expensive electronics like our the Mac that we have mm -hmm. for our editing and, and our video uh, production. You need to protect your rig. So get a surge protector that you attach to the pedestal before you attach your power cord. Now, along with hooking up to power, you also need to have different power adapters. Now, if your rig runs 50 amp power, that's gonna have a different plug than if your rig or RV is in 30 amp power. So having adapters to convert your power down to 30 amp is going to prove very helpful for you. You're gonna be looking for something called a dog bone. These things can be a little pricey. Make sure that you have the necessary equipment so when you pull into the RV park of your choice, you aren't shocked that you aren't able to plug into power. Pro tip, this is a list of necessary tools you'll need for full-time RVing. Now let's get into some optional accessories that you can have. You can trick out your RV any which way you want, especially depending on how you want to camp. If you want to do the boondocking, you're going to need more accessories. If you're going to just be in an RV park, there might be some other things that would make your life a little more comfy, a little more easy. Here's a list of some things that we either have and use or would like to add to our rig in the future. A 3500 watt generator. Uh, solar panels, either mobile or attached to the top of the rig. Reflectix. This is key in the summertime. It gets hot, baby, and this will help keep your rig cool. A large water bladder. Very important for those of you boondocking, uh, out away from sources of water. And the list goes on. <laughs> if any of these items seem helpful to you, you can check out our Amazon affiliate store on our website at diaryofafamily.com. If you are just joining this series, check out our full-time RVing as a family playlist to watch the entire series. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, live, live life intentionally. intentionally. Bye. Bye.